In this video segment, I'm going to take you through the procedure for changing out the ball seat and clapper seal on an Oasis Hydrant Assist valve. In order to perform this procedure, you'll need a couple tools. Uh, eighth inch Allen wrench, three thirty seconds Allen wrench, and a five thirty seconds Allen wrench, a pointed seal pick, an inch and a quarter combination wrench or a crescent wrench, and some light grease. To start this procedure, we're going to start with the ball seal first. We'll start by using the eighth inch Allen wrench to back out the set screw that retains the outlet of this, of this side. This will have blue Loctite on it, so the initial breakout may be a bit difficult. Remove that and retain for later. Once that's out, the outlet's free to swivel. In most cases, this will be a locked out coupling, so simply grabbing it and unthreading it should work. If need be, you can use a spanner wrench on the rocker lugs to help remove this. Once this is all the way out, go ahead and set it aside. This gets us into the seat. Using a seal pick, simply pry out the old seat, and that can be discarded. When we're ready to put the new seat in, a light layer of grease where the seal is going to sit. The seat goes in with the flat face in, press that into its spot, making sure that it's seated all the way around, and then again, put a light layer of grease over the seat. You'll notice on the outlet, there's a series of dimpled holes drilled all the way around the threaded circumference. Next to those drilled holes is a set of dimples that corresponds to each hole. We'll use those dimples as reference marks when we go to line this up so that the set screw engages the outlet. Start by threading this in. Thread it all the way in till it's tight. Once it's tight, back it off so that the lockout screw faces near the top. And then turn it on its side. Now here's where we're going to want to look for those dimples and line it up with the threaded hole. So back it off or advance it forward until that lines up. Once that's lined up using blue Loctite, put a small dab of blue Loctite on the set screw we removed. And then thread that in till it's flush. Don't tighten, tighten it against the outlet as that can push the outlet off, off kilter and cause a leak. So we just go in till it's flush. Once that's in, you'll want to operate the ball one or two times just to make sure it doesn't hang up anywhere. If that operation is smooth, you're done with the ball seat. We're going to begin the clapper in a lot the same way. We're going to start by removing the two fire outlet labeled on the front. Again, we're going to remove the set screw using the eighth inch Allen wrench. Set that aside for use later. And in the same manner, unthread the outlet. In the case of this outlet, it's sealed by an O-ring. In some cases, when you remove this, the O-ring will stay with the outlet. Other cases, it will go, it'll stay inside the casting. In this case, it stayed on here. Just make sure that's in place so we can use that later. Next, we're going to remove the clapper indicator. These are retained using a set screw, using a 3 seconds Allen wrench. Just back that out until you're able to pull the indicator off. Once the indicator's off, this is where we'll use the inch and a quarter uh, combination or crescent wrench. Back this nut out of the top. This will have blue Loctite on it as well, so the initial breaking of that thread may take a little force. 
This is also sealed with an O-ring, so there is some tension against it. Remove that for use later. And then from the two fire side, hold on to the clapper. Remove the pin. And in the outlet, we've machined two notches, one at the bottom, one at the top. This allows the clapper to be pulled out of the unit. At this point, you can set the valve aside. And using the 530 seconds Allen wrench, we're going to move, remove the four button head screws. These screws will have red Loctite on them, so the initial breaking loose of those will be a little more difficult than the ones that have had the blue on it. Retain those. We're going to use those again later. Removing the two long screws from the oval sealed side will allow the circle seal to come loose from the clapper. Again, back those out. We're going to retain all the parts with the exception of the rubber seals. Those will be replaced. Once those are removed, we're ready to begin the reassembly. With the clapper sitting with the hole or the, the shaft receptacle to your left side and the notch facing away from you, set that down. The oval seal will go on this side with the raised face facing up towards you and then a stainless steel disc goes over that. Taking the round seal, place that in either direction on the metal backer plate and the stainless steel disc on top of it. There are four holes in this metal backer plate. Either set of holes will work for retaining this seal. Using the short screws, apply red Loctite liberally to help seal against leaks and install through the stainless plate, through the rubber seal and into the aluminum backer plate. Just leave that slightly loose till you get the second one in. Again, red Loctite on the threads. and tighten. Now you can go ahead and tighten both of them. Now using the long bolts, install into the oval side and push all the way through. Once those are through, again, a liberal amount of red Loctite on the threads. And then the two open holes on the backer plate are going to mate to these screws. Thread those in. And once both are in, go ahead and tighten. This has prepared the clapper for reinstallation into the unit. The clapper can only go in one way and operate properly. When installing this, the notched end needs to be facing up. Again, lining it up with the two cutouts in the opening. Push that in. With the shaft we removed earlier, the oblong or the egg-shaped end is going to go in first, pointing down. 
apply a small bit of grease to the bottom. On the top of this shaft is a roll pin. That roll pin is going to mate inside the groove that we had facing up when we installed this. Press that or push that through the clapper and get it to line with the hole in the bottom of the casting. Once you've made contact with that hole, you'll be able to press it in and that roll pin will fall into the notch of, of the clapper. Two O-rings on the retaining nut that go over the shaft, one outer and one inner. A light coat of grease, trying the best you can to keep the grease off the threads. This simply, by keeping the threads as clean as you can, that helps the, the lock tight to set. Once you've greased those, a little bit of blue Loctite on these threads. Hold the clapper up, press that over the shaft and thread that on. And again, using your wrench, tighten that until tight. You don't have to crank down on it, you just need to make it snug against the casting. Once that's on, press the clapper against the from relay pump side, so we want the clapper sitting over here. Take your indicator, put a small bit of blue Loctite on the set screw that retains it. Lining the set screw with the open hole, thread that in until the indicator no longer wobbles. That completes the clapper. We'll go ahead and reinstall the outlet. As I mentioned, there's an O-ring that seals this outlet. It'll either be here or in the casting. In either case, make sure there's a light coat of grease on it. We're going to reinstall the outlet the same way we did on the ball seat side. The same drilled holes and corresponding dipples are on each of the outlets, so we'll use those to line up with a set screw. Again, go in all the way till it's tight and back it off so the lock screw is towards the top. We'll flip it over, a little blue Loctite on the retaining set screw. Again, looking for the dimple to line with that hole. Once it's lined up, thread the set screw in till it's just flush. Once that's in, that completes the procedure. We're changing out the ball seat and clapper seal on the Oasis hydrant valve.